Hey everybody, I'm Jordan with PDQ.com. Uh, I'm trying to get my thumbnail issue fixed with Jake, so what I've done is I've brought him some pizza. Hopefully that, uh, that helps things out. Nope. All right, I guess not. Donuts. <laughs> All right, so uh, I guess I hope you enjoyed the thumbnail for this video. Pizza's not gonna cut it. Uh, so basically we're, go we're going over how to keep, if you're passing through credentials, how to keep your system secure. Uh, I just earlier, or I guess last week, last Thursday, did a webcast on this where I spent 30, 40 minutes doing a deep dive into this. So if this kind of uh, gets your interest going, may maybe go check out the longer version, you probably get a lot more information. Uh, basically, what we're doing for the credentials is it comes down to a certain point where you need, you need to pass something through that you don't want anyone to have access to. And how do we keep that secure? All right, so in this case, the first one we're gonna go over is DP API. Uh, basically what we're doing is we're just building credentials on this machine. So we're got the password file and then we're doing a get credential where it asks for the password. The name doesn't ma matter, but put in my super secret password that nobody knows. Uh, the reason we did this with git credential instead of like a git host where we did as secure is there is a file a recording your history of what you typed in there so your password is going to show up somewhere in your computer in clear text still using the git credential removes that from the equation so you're making sure your password's never showing up and then what we're doing is we're taking the password that we just created and we are pushing that out to to the uh the, the password file uh <clears throat> So this is probably the most secure method you're gonna come if you use credentials. And the reason why it's useful on this user account, on this machine, and that's it. If someone else logs into the computer, they get a hold of that file, they're not gonna be able to decrypt it. Uh, it. It is specific to your account and your machine. So it has value for machines or something you run for yourself. But if you're looking to run something on another machine where you need to send some credentials, uh, this, this isn't gonna do it for you. Uh, it is m the most secure, but there are ways to create still secure, secure versions uh, and be able to use them on, on multiple machines. And the way we're doing that is basically you have to generate both a key file and, and the password at that point. Uh, so we're gonna come into the next one. Uh, basically this is a lot of the same stuff. We're creating the key file. We're setting uh, for 32, uh, I think 32 numbers or 32 bits or 255. It'll choose it between, assign it between one and 254 basically to give you a specific uh, code that you need to unlock it. Uh, so we run this one. If a, in, in case you wonder what that looks like, we'll just come in here and run key. And you can see it's just 32 different numbers that are within the range that we have there. And we're gonna basically use that file to then encrypt the password. And remember earlier when I said read host as secure string uh, was not safe? Well, that's what I have here. So when I type in this password, that is going to be captured somewhere on this machine. Like I said, not the best way. You use the get credential if you can. Uh, so we're going to, did we run all those? Yeah, we're gonna run all of this one here. Give me your secrets, super secret password. Uh, <clears throat> and now this is going to create two things. It creates the key file and it puts it somewhere and it creates the password file. And you need both, it's kind of a lock and key system. So what I would recommend on this one have your key file in one location, make sure your permissions are locked down, the only ones you want to be able to see it can. And I would put the password file in a different location and same thing, you want that locked down. That way, not the key to the kingdom is not all in one folder, it's in two separate locations and you, you, have a, you can really lock that down to make sure people can't get in there. And then from that one, you basically come in, when it comes to create the credential, you'd import the key you built, you'd import the password you built, and uh, you would use that to decrypt and then you could build your credential object on the fly. So that way you can use these credentials on any computer out there that has access to the file share where you, you save that. Uh, and the last one we're gonna go over today is LAPS. <clears throat> uh, if you're using this one, fantastic, it's rec recommended. What this does is it sets a local admin account with a rotating password and that could be, and that is set per machine and it changes on a schedule. Uh, so. Basically what you want to do is you want to go download the, or yeah, the, the LAPS installer, I have the 64-bit here. When you're installing that on your machine, you want to include the PowerShell module and it's going to give you the command that you need for this one. And then what you're doing here, and this, this script is out on the GitHub, I'm not going to go over each and every step, but just kind of give you an idea. This, but basically lines five on here, oh, I did the good highlight there. It's gonna basically go through and it's gonna tell you which accounts have permission to see that password that is stored in AD. And then right here, we're doing the same thing. We are grabbing the lapse password and building the credential ops of that. And then 
I have an example here where on Allen Rails, I'm using the credential I built. Uh, let me just run that real quick. To then get the Xbox service, just kind of showcase that I can run remotely with these credentials. Uh, and you can see we have the services there. From there, you actually go in, you can change, you, you know, you, basically anything that requires a credential, you could run that one. But instead of having a credential object, it's something that's already stored in Active Directory. It's secured the same way any other laps are. You're just basically using your system to connect two laps to grab a local admin account. Uh, so it's going to be a local admin. It's not going to work uh, for user uh, profile specific things, but it is a way to have a quick way to grab <clears throat> Grab, grab the password you need and deploy what you need. And since you can run that against each machine, since each password's gonna be different, you can basically do a for each and you have everything you need to uh, remotely deploy your PowerShell. Um, I know a lot of these were not quite as densely packed as this one. I, I basically condensed 40 minutes into, into 10 here. If you really wanna know more about credentials, feel free to go watch the, uh, the webcast we did on Thursday. I'll probably link it below and by, I'll do it. I mean, Jake will. Donuts or no, he still wants you to go visit our webcast. So uh, I think he'll do that one. Just I look through that. There's a lot of really useful information. And it's a way that when you start using PowerShell on remote machines, how you can still keep your data secure. Secure data is secure job. Now, from PDQ.com, I'm Jordan.